everybody and welcome back uh, to another episode here. Really not much to talk about. Uh, just wanted to go ahead and break out the camera and film the, uh, the 75 for you guys here. Um, if you guys don't already know, I'm working on the 150 gallon tank, uh, getting that ready to go and things have been moving and shaking with that one. Um, got water in it, got the salt in there, just waiting on one more box to come in so I can get it up to the uh, 1.25 that I want it to be at. And then I can start moving things out of this tank um, and possibly the lagoon over to this new system here. Uh, so really I just wanted to go ahead and show you guys the tank probably one last time here. Uh, didn't have too much to talk about. Um, you know, if you guys aren't subscribed and you're just now finding this channel here, go and hit the uh, subscribe, hit the like, follow me on the journey with the 150. Um, that should be pretty interesting as I move everything from possibly two tanks over to one, one tank here. So let me recap what's been going on. I know yeah, most of you guys, most of my subscribers haven't seen this tank in a while. There's been a lot that's been going on with it. Um, let's take this all the way back to Macna. So Macna came around and we had a hurricane coming through. So I decided to let me go ahead and do a big water change on this to try to uh, mitigate anything that could happen if I did lose power or what's not. And that's when I started having some, some serious problems with the tank. Um, some of the corals started really showing a, a good deal of stress. Um, now, for the whole entire time that I had the tank set up, um, I wasn't too happy with, with the outcome of everything. Uh, to, be, to be straightforward and honest with you guys. Uh, I've had some growth, some death, um, pretty much a lot of corals were stagnant, um, not doing much at all. They were, they were surviving but not really thriving and growing as I would have expected within the whole year that I had the tank set up. So fast forward back to Macna again here. And um, after I did the water change, my Mystic Sunset Monty um, took a big leap off the edge and was pretty much almost bone white. Um, it didn't look too good. It was like a grayish, uh, like a grayish color. You could tell there was still skin. All the polyps had retracted. Some spots had really started to die off on it. And I did lose a couple of the Montes um, during that. It was a uh, uh, one of the orange star, starfire, starburst Montiporas that also died on me there. I had that for a while. It was, it was growing a bit, not fast, but um, it went very quickly. A lot of my Montiporas showed a great deal of stress. And that's when I decided to go ahead and um, make a change on the tank. And, uh, do what I needed to do to get everything back in order. Um, I went ahead and I actually, I switched salts. I, I, I did have to do that. Um, not sure what was going on with the, with the salt that I was using. Um, but I can tell you this, I, other than changing salt, I did nothing else. Um, I changed the salt and that was, that was the turnaround for at least the Mystic Sunset. Now I had already lost the Montipores and all the other ones were pretty much shot. Um, that one was the only one, since it is a big chunk of coral, it was the only one that showed some signs of still having um, skin left on it. So I did the water change, got everything back in order. Uh, again, I, I don't know exactly what happened. I sent off for two ICPs, one to Triton and one to ICP. Um, I probably won't be doing that again until I can have a guarantee that it will be received. Um, the Triton Marine took about a month to get back. ICP, they lost my test altogether. Um, no one can find it. Uh, you know, it was a whole back and forth. Um, luckily, I didn't pay for it. It was the one I had got from Macna. Um, so, it, you know, you live and learn. And I probably won't be doing that unless I can have a guarantee that it, it's going to be received. So, um, the, the Triton did come back. Uh, there were some some lower than normal um, elements in the boron and bromine. Um, I did have higher than normal phosphates. And I think everything else was on the up and up. Strontium was pretty high. 
uh, magnesium was high, calcium was where it should be. Um, I, I figure I, I contribute all of those other elements that were stable due to the, uh, having the calcium reactor running on this tank. So, um, yeah, that that was a big a big hurt there because I, I, at that point when I started to lose those pores, I didn't know what was going on. Um, it was doing water changes and things just weren't looking looking the way that you know that they should have. So, you skip ahead a little bit further after Mac, and I ended up getting the call from. Um, the tank builders um, that the tank was ready and I could uh, go ahead and pick that up and so we scheduled to go ahead and meet up to uh, get the new tank here and at that point I decided you know um, obviously you had no choice the tanks here so you gotta start building everything so I built the cabinet and got a stand um, I built the stand got everything ready for that um, just did all the plumbing on it and it should be uh, ready to go here within like the next week or two um, What else is going on here? I did move the tank over so I can get the 70 the 75 out of the way and put the 150 in place uh, and, and in doing so I ended up um, Killing off a couple more corals um, What happened there was I, I was in the process of moving the tank and I left everything out of the water for far too long uh, some corals that were frags were already stressed from everything else that was going on. This was just more stress on top of it, and they all kicked the bucket. Uh, so some of the stuff that did did get hurt was the dragon fruit, um, Acropora, my tenuous at the top, um, the starfire acro, uh, a couple of the. Uh, do to do uh, acro and I think uh, this piece that I got from Worldwide, uh, they're not sure if it's a uh, red dragon or something, not a red dragon, but a uh, dragon soul or something like that. Um, that piece also, a lot of the the uh, Cephastrias didn't like the, uh, the lack of water and neither did the, um, the green planet, that, that totally checked out. So. I'm going to slowly restock it um, and just catching up with everything here. I'm actually starting to restock it. I just left from the FMAS show if you guys haven't checked that out. Um, I got a video that I, that I uploaded here from that show and grabbed a few corals from there. So I'm slowly getting the aquapores back into the system here. Um, but for right now, it is what it is. Um, I did lose a female antheus. I, I don't know where that female antheus is at. Uh, after the move, I did a, did a fish count. Um, it's probably been gone well before then, um, but I just realized it and uh, yeah, so <laughs> I'm probably going to have to restock the antheus. And as far as stocking goes, man, you guys tell me here. I, I, I'll list off the fish that I have and tell me if you guys recommend any anything or if you have any any suggestions on fish for the 150 um, if you do leave them in the comments below um, if you think everything's fine with the way I have it stocked right now also go ahead and drop a comment below but what I'm gonna do is start off with the tang gang here I got a spotted coli tang um, the tricolor uh, scopus tang um, a bicolor fox face See the yellow chorus here, uh, trio of antheus, the clownfish pair, and four damsels in here. Um, two of the Roland and two of the bluehead damsels, um, and one green spot uh, goby in here. Um, I'm thinking of probably doing a cleaner ass, maybe, maybe a, a, a spotted. Um, a le female leopard wrasse. I uh, had one of those for a while. They're actually pretty um, nice looking fish. Uh, maybe uh, again getting one more uh, female antheus in here and maybe a, um, a Midas, Midas Blenny. Um, I'll probably put a lid on. I've had two other Midas Blennies, no lid, and they, well, First time I got one, there was no lid and it jumped out. Second time I got one, it literally waited until I did a water change and then jumped. So if I do get a Midas Bloody, I'll, I'll definitely put a lid on it. 
and uh, I try to keep them inside of there. They are, they are for sure for me prone to jumping. So that's the video so far. Uh, the skimmer and the sump and the, the, the whole, everything that's been going on down bottom has been uh, rock and rolling. Uh, again, if you guys haven't checked out that video that I did on the Clarice, go ahead and do so. Um, that has actually been one of the best investments on this tank here. It, it, that, um, you know, it just became second nature. So it, it, after a while, I didn't check the, uh, the filter roller, realized that yeah, this thing's been on the tank for a while and um, obviously well over a month and I haven't checked it, looked at it and realized the uh, roll was pretty much uh, gone and expired or just about to be expired. So um, again, that's that's one of the best investments on here. It, it, anything I put in here within reason uh, is quickly filtered out as long as it makes it over to the overflow. Um, I vary my feed in between. I have an auto feeder that goes off at least once a day and I may feed frozen, powdered food. You know, I give a fish a variety of foods. So um, that's been a pretty good thing to have on the tank. So again, if you guys uh, wanna follow along with the 150 build here, um, since it is up, I'll try to get some of the, the video footage that I got of uh, the stand build and, and uh, the tank set up here. But go ahead, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment, and I will check you guys on the next one. Peace.